pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. And now for the singing of the national anthem, Ms. Gail Say.
now, Commander of the Honor Guard, Captain Jose Fuentes, will ring the bell three times. This symbolizes a moment of silence and last alarm remembrance for all firefighters in the line of duty. We ask that you please remain standing for the invocation by Fire Chaplain Father Christopher Marino. God, Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, we invoke your blessing upon us today as we observe this moment of transition in the lives of Chief Zaraban, Chief Hevia, the men and women of Miami Fire and Rescue, and indeed the entire city of Miami and beyond. Excellence in service. We invoke your benevolent reward upon Chief Joseph Zaraban as he retires from the office of Fire Chief. We give you thanks, O Lord, for his brave service as a first responder. It is firm and steady leadership in the daunting face of chaos and disaster here and abroad, and the support and encouragement of our Miami firefighters day in and day out. May he continue to inspire us as he leaves the department to lead his loved ones with ever greater time and attention as chief of his family. We invoke your strength and protection upon Chief Robert Hevia as he assumes the office of fire chief. May he judge wisely administer mercifully and lead justly on the front line and on the third floor. May he be for us a father, a brother, and a friend. May Chief Hevia inspire all of us to serve each other better as first responders and citizens of Miami. Come to us, Lord, and open our hearts and our minds today in gratitude, celebration, and hope as a department, and as a community. Confident in your mercy, we say, Amen. Please be seated. I would like now to introduce several special guests that are present with us today. Honorable Mayor Francis Suarez, City Clerk Todd Hannon, Commissioner Miguel Gabella, Commissioner Damien Pardo, Deputy City Manager Natasha Colbrook Williams, CFO and State Fire Marshal Jimmy Petronas, CEO Carlos Magoya, our friend here at the Marlins, Mr. Alfie Mesa, and City Attorney Victoria Mendez. We are also proud to have here the following individuals with us today. Retired Chief Maurice Kemp, Retired Chief William Shorty Bryson, Miami Beach Chief Virgil Fernandez, Key Biscayne Chief Eric Lang, Coral Gables Chief Marcos De La Rosa, Hialeah Chief Williams Guerra, and Miami-Dade County Acting Fire Chief Arthur Holmes. And last but certainly not least, Supervisory Special Agent retired with the ATF, Vincent Curry. And now for the introduction of flowers to the Zorobin and Hevia family, I'd like to call up Executive Officer to the Fire Chief, Ignatius Perry. Thank you, sir. 
At this time, we invite Mayor Francis Suarez for some opening remarks. Excellence through service. When I think about the Miami Fire Rescue Department, what it's meant to me personally, what it's meant to each of our citizens, and what it embodies, integrity, competency, hard work, excellence, highest rated fire department, the highest possible rating of a fire department in our country. Those attributes are embodied by the two men that are to my left. I know that Chief Kemp is sitting tall somewhere around here. Where are you, Chief? We got a chair big enough for you? Um, and by, by Chief, and, and not that I don't mean to call out Shorty, I just worked with the three of these men. And there is a common thread. And the common thread are the words that I used to describe and elaborate on what excellence through service means and is embodied in individuals in this department. Now, we have 700 plus firefighters. And I know that every single one of you who work in our city do everything in your power to embody those principles. But part of it is because you see it. You see it in the example that is set by your leaders. We're very blessed. And I was telling uh, new Chief Evia, about to be made Chief Evia, that the process of choosing a fire chief in the city is, is one of the most pure processes that I've ever witnessed based exclusively on competency and finding the right person to lead our department. And I've gotten to see it a couple of times. And it's inspiring. It's how you want an organization to be run. And it's part of their ethos. I've gotten to know these men personally. I've seen them in moments that the public does not get to see them. I was there when Chief Z came to me and said, after Hurricane Dorian, that was devastated the Bahamas. And now this is a person who has led the urban search and rescue teams since he was in his mid thirties. He recounted to me earlier that he couldn't take family vacations because he knew he couldn't be away for long stretches of time. And anyone who knows urban search and rescue knows that it's a federal team where we're reimbursed, right Jimmy? And yet in the Bahamas, they're not under the federal jurisdiction of the United States. So we knew that whatever expenses we incurred were not going to be reimbursed. That was not in any way, shape, or form a factor in Joe Z, Chief Z's recommendation for intervention, an immediate intervention, because lives were at stake. He knew, A, that they had a unique competency to address the tragedy and the situation and the emergency, and B, that we had a moral obligation to intervene, irrespective of the cost, irrespective of the fact that we would not be reimbursed. It wasn't about the money. It was about lives. 
It's in their DNA. They're here to save lives. And of course, Bob, Robert, what can I say? Um, and I know Dr. Adams is in the crowd as well. Where are you, Dr. Adams? There you are. We were shoulder to shoulder in some of the most perilous moments in arguably the history of the city, the 120 plus history of the city during COVID. Chief Evia helped steer the ship, helped us make life decisions. And I know uh, Matt, former manager Migoya is here too. Carlos, where are you? There you are. You're a nice, what tie is it, a mess tie on? Which he wants it to flow so that people can see that it's in a mess tie. I've never heard that before. Love you, buddy. Um, but Carlos set a standard as a manager of professionalism that was also inculcated. And as CEO of Jackson Memorial Hospital, he stood shoulder to shoulder with Josie, with Bob, with myself, to manage this crisis that was a public health crisis threatening the world. And I got to see Chief Hevia in action, behind the scenes, without all the cameras, without, when people are tested and you get to know who they are, their character. And I got to see his coolness under pressure and his analytical ability and his good judgment, all evidenced in a moment of crisis. So I can tell you without equivocation or hesitation that the city of Miami is blessed. That we are blessed to have had the leadership of Josie, who started at 18 years old. He was 5'11". Hope I'm not stealing any of his talking points. At 20, when they issued his next identification card, he was six feet. So he told me he was still growing. That's how young he was, he was 18 years old. And obviously his wife is ever present, his children who have always been by his side and at every event. We thank you for your sacrifice, uh, for your uh, commitment to the city because it is a family endeavor. And I know that from personal experience as well. I've been here not quite as long as Joe, but 15 years, which in political years is like 35. And then Bobby, we, we, um, We'll be praying for you, and you have a great chaplain. We will be praying for you, and we know you converted to Catholicism, I think. Uh, somebody told me in 2020, I'm not sure if that date is correct. But we'll, we will be praying for you, uh, because we know that the difficult decisions do not stop. Today is a moment of joy. Today is a moment of reflection on Chief Z's career and on your future. But it's also a call to action for all of us to support your tenure, to pray for you, and for the members of our department to work with you to make sure that they embody your ethic, your integrity. And I know that they will because I know the character they possess because I've interacted with a lot of them myself as well. So I thank all of you for being here. It's clear from the audience how important this transfer is to our community. I wanna thank Alfie. Where are you, Alfie? There you are, in the Marlins. Hopefully this will be good luck for you. Start winning some games. Cool. Thank you. And, uh, but we thank you because you, you're a great partner. You've always said yes to your venue uh, when we needed it and, and you can see what a beautiful day it is. And, and I'll just finish by saying this. And I know that Jimmy will appreciate this. We live in the greatest country on earth. And one of the beautiful things about our department is that every time I come to a ceremony, I get to see that amazing flag in the wind. And one of the things that I can say again unequivocally about Chief Kemp, Chief Z, and future Chief Evia is that they embody that American spirit, that entrepreneurial spirit, that spirit of hard work, and that spirit that makes this country so great, which is the spirit of giving and service, of excellence through service. So thank you for 
your years of service, thank you for taking on this service, and thank you to your families for going along as well. God bless you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And now I'd like to call up Chief Financial Officer and State Fire Marshal, Jimmy Petronas. change of command and I'm thinking about the emotions that are here today and I've been to a few of these but I've never been to one where I get to see a friend of mine who I look up to who's going to go into retirement and you think about the emotions we've got here today the emotions we've got we've got Josie who's retiring you know and I tell you a good friend of mine who worked at my family's restaurant for 65 years he told me he said, Jimmy, he says, you'll never see a hearse pulling a U-Haul. Your retirement is well-deserved. And then you got the excitement, the sadness that Joe's leaving. And now Bob's coming in. So it's just, you know, for one, thank you all for being here today. Thank you for the support and love. But I want to start off with thanking the families. The families probably sacrificed more. The families of everybody in the room sacrificed more than anybody else. You know that your loved one is making a commitment to service of a fellow fellow man, a family, a community, and they're always going to be in harm's way. It's not if, it's always going to be in harm's way. It's not if we have another hurricane, it's when we're going to have another hurricane. And Mr. Mayor, you and your commission, thank you for being so supportive. You get it. You get it. We can't have good things in life. You don't have good schools. You don't have good businesses. You don't have good jobs. You don't have a prosperous economy unless it's safe. And the mayor gets it. His commission gets it. You know, supporting these men and women that put on the uniform, that take this calling, that make a difference in the lives of every community. You want a strong community? It starts off with having good first responders. And all of you, thank you for your service. You've got amazing leadership. And for those spouses here, again, thank you for being so supportive. If you haven't figured it out, I'm not from this part of the country. I'm from North Florida. And you don't realize until I got this job about seven years ago how much Miami bails out of other parts of the state. Well, it seemed like just yesterday Hurricane Michael's hitting Panama City, Florida, my hometown, and Task Force 2 is sleeping on the floor of Rutherford High School going from door to door in that community, putting people's lives back together. Or in a morning in June, not that long ago, when Surfside collapsed, and the men and women of Task Force One and Task Force Two, 30 days in straight, slipping on tennis courts, picking up glass, rocks, concrete, children's toys, photo albums, doing everything possible, do anything possible to find that little hope of life. The trauma that these men and women go through, we don't, we're, we're spoiled. They go through a different type of sacrifice. And to be able to be here today to speak about my friend Joe um, is a truly an honor. I am. Um, I had my office prepared. I've got one thing about being in the state of Florida and being in Tallahassee, we get really cool stationery. So I've got a resolution on behalf of the state of Florida. I'm going to put it back here with the rest of your goodies that you're walking out with today. And uh, just to let you know, the state of Florida appreciates your sacrifice to our citizens. I tell people all the time, um, we're, not, we're not one state. We're about five different countries. We're a very diverse, very diverse state. But until I got this job, I didn't realize the role 
that this city plays in the recovery of our state every single time there's a disaster. In um, September of, of 22, Ian hits Southwest Florida. And um, we get down there, we want to be down there immediately. And want to be boots on the ground to understand what's going on, how we can make a difference, try not to get in the way. And so as we're making the rounds, it's, it's a, a part of the state that's been devastated. No electricity, no cell phones, boats and cars in the middle of the road, houses destroyed. I mean, it is, it is the worst of the worst. And it's about 11 o'clock at night. Cell service was kind of sketchy. And I called Joe to check on him. And I'm just, we're, we're driving back. We're about 60 miles from where we're staying at a hotel. And Joe says, you're going to come and check on us, aren't you? I'm thinking, shit. Yes, absolutely. And we're driving, driving out there. You see the devastation. And then you see this beacon of hope as you get on Fort Myers Beach. And Task Force 2 has a base camp set up. And Joe is there, and Scott's there, and all the guys are there. Iggy's there. And they're going from door to door. And in some of the little condominiums, you see a flicker of light where these idiots wouldn't evacuate. And you see what these men do in times of a disaster. They hold the communities together. And I was so proud to be a Floridian. I was so proud to be able to call these men and women my friends because I saw what they were doing right then and there at that part of the state at their absolute worst time. You've got so much to be proud of. Mayor, you've got the best of the best. You truly do. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your service. Bob, get used to it because I'm around a lot. I, uh, I'm a groupie, man. I really am. This service has been an infection on me. And, and uh, uh, you know, I have so much respect for you, your future, and the men and women that you lead. God bless you all, and thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Last but certainly not least, District 1 Commissioner, Mr. G Miguel Gabela. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's an honor and a privilege uh, for me and my wife to be here uh, to be uh, witnessing this. Uh, I'll make it short. I'm new at this. <laughs> but uh, great speeches by, uh, by the mayor and uh, Jimmy. And uh, what I want to say is uh, uh, thank you for your service, uh, Chief jo Joseph Zerubal and uh, incoming Chief uh, Robert Havia and, and your families because I know the sacrifices they make if they don't get to see you in the, in the weekends, uh, in holidays, uh, because of your, uh, your jobs, your commitment to the job. And uh, I, I just want to know it's, it's heartfelt what you do. We know what you do. And uh, thank you very much again. And I wish you the best of luck, uh, Chief, of the, of the former, about to be former Chief in about five minutes in your retirement. And to the new Chief, uh, I wish you the, the best of luck in my office and I, whatever we can do for you to accommodate you and give you the tools uh, that you guys need to do your, what you do, uh, please, uh, thank you very much for your service again and to all the, uh, the firemen, uh, city of Maine. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And now at this time, I'd like to call up the Zorobin family for the presentation of the retired fire chief's helmet and axe. Chiefs, if you may stand, please.
Today marks a momentous occasion as we gather to honor and bid farewell to an exceptional individual who has served our community with unwavering dedication and bravery. As our esteemed fire chief, Joseph Zorobin, embarks on his well-deserved retirement, we gather not only to recognize his outstanding career, but also to express our deepest gratitude to his family who has stood by his side throughout this journey. As we present Chief Zorobin with a retired fire chief's helmet and ax, which symbolize honor, recognition, and the continuation of his service beyond the organization. This gesture acknowledges his steadfast leadership and the enduring legacy he leaves within the firefighting community. Chief Zorobin's impact transcends his tenure with changes he implemented poised to shape the future of firefighting for generations to come. Behind every firefighter lies a family whose sacrifices often go unnoticed. They endure worry, long hours, and uncertainty, providing unwavering support as their loved ones selflessly protect our communities. To Chief Robbins' family, we extend our sincerest appreciation for their unwavering dedication and sacrifice. They have been the backbone of this service, sharing in both the challenges and triumphs along the way. In closing, let us express our deepest gratitude to Chief Zorobin for his years of exemplary service and leadership, and let us extend our heartfelt appreciation to his family for their steadfast support. Together, they epitomize the true spirit of family, community, and selflessness. As we bid farewell to one chapter, let us eagerly welcome the new beginnings that lie ahead, knowing that Chief Zorobin's legacy of service and dedication will endure for generations to come. Thank you to the Zorobin family. And now, without further ado, Fire Chief Joseph Zorobin. Good morning. Like Jimmy said, good morning. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. We're on a timeline here, and that timeline is the line between the shade and the sun. So I'm going to make it as quickly as possible. Thank you all. Sincerely, thank you for taking time out of your day here with us. I'd like to begin by thanking just a few people, starting with the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Manager, who I know isn't here, but our deputy manager and uh, and here and the department directors as well as the administrative staff. Thank you for all the support that you have given to our organization. Without you, we absolutely could not fulfill our mission and we recognize that. So once again, thank you. And you know what, they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Chief Manny Morales. Manny, thank you. My partner in crime. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I got five minutes left and I'm out of here. <laughs> thank you for your partnership and thank you above all for your friendship. <laughs> Local 587, our union, 
I'm not sure if Alex Cardenas is here. Alex, thank you. Freddy Delgado, our past president, thank you. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for continuing to build bridges. Thank you for always, always keeping our focus on the health and wellness of our firefighters. Thank you. Yes, we're gonna clap for each one, even if I have to prompt you. Most importantly, my executive staff and my administrative staff. Thank you for the support, for the advice, for the guidance. And for those of you who know me well, like my executive staff, for supporting my vision, no matter how unachievable or unattainable it may have seemed. Also, to the USAR team, to our urban search and rescue team, which has been such a significant part of my career and a significant part of my life. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the memories. Now you guys are getting it. Last but certainly not least, my family. My mom, my sisters, the rest of my family traveling down here, to my wife Anna, thank you for always being here to support me. Thank you for allowing me to make my fire department family a priority and for taking on the role of chief of the department at home. Thank you. But good news, honey, I'll be resuming command after today. To the kids, Joey, Jordan, Ethan, thank you for enduring the long hours, the seemingly endless, day, endless days, and I'm looking forward to giving you back all the time I took from you. Thank you. Big smile by the little one. For the last seven years, I've had the privilege of leading the most profound and progressive department in the country, a vibrant workforce, of men and women who value our past traditions and embrace the challenges of the future. It's your honor, it's your integrity, it's your commitment to our community, your dedication to duty, and above all, your devotion to each other that ensures the success of our organization and the safety of our firefighters for generations to come. For this, I thank you. For this, I'm indebted to you. As your fire chief, it is what motivated me each and every day. It's what will undoubtedly motivate our next fire chief to lead this department to new heights. You have heard me say time and time again that our greatest asset by far is our people. It's not our fire trucks, it's not our fire stations, it's not the fancy equipment, it's you. I say it because I believe it. And because I believe it, I have had the privilege of witnessing it. Whether in our day-to-day -day operations handling 911 calls, or on major events like 9-11, the Haiti earthquake, countless hurricanes, the COVID-19 pandemic that Rob led us through, I'm sorry, Bob led us through, <laughs> and the collapse of the Champlain Towers in Surfside. It's your drive, your passion, your energy, and your commitment to never surrender, no matter the challenge. That is what makes this organization great. It's what secures our today. It's what ensures our tomorrow. And if we are being completely honest, those same traits that allow you to stand among the best firefighters in the nation, also make it a little difficult to control you at times. That's probably the understatement of the year, I know. But you know what? I would not have it any other way. Thank you for being who you are. I'm proud of you. I'm proud to be one of you. I'm privileged to have led you, and I'm a better person because of you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Since the late 1800s, we have only had 19 fire chiefs leading this organization. Chief Robert Hevia will now be our 20th. Chief Hevia has spent a lifetime preparing himself for the responsibility of assuming the role, your experience, your ability to lead, and your compassion will ensure that the Miami Fire Department will not only survive, but we will thrive. You've been training your whole life. The weight that you're beginning to feel resting on your shoulders is the same weight that I am beginning to feel lift off of mine. It's the burden of command. The responsibility for over a thousand department lives and of every soul in our community. And I want you to hear it from me in front of all of these people here today. You are absolutely ready. You are ready to take on this responsibility. You are ready to lead us into the next generation. As we embark on a new chapter of our story, we stand on the shoulders of our predecessors, each hoping the next one does better than the last. It is truly a selfless culture. It's designed to put pressure on each successive leader in our organization to do better than the last. And I have no doubt that you are up to the task, my friend. My final words of inspiration. Don't screw this up. We're all watching. Congratulations, brother. I'm proud of you. And thank you all for an amazing career. It has been undoubtedly the greatest honor of my life. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Z. Congratulations. You'll be missed. If I can ask you both to please stand in your positions. And now for the official change of command. Robert Hevia will be presented with his fire chief helmet, symbolizing his elevation to this prestigious role and his unwavering dedication to leading from the front lines of this organization. Distinguished guests, within the fire service, the Beagle carries profound symbolism deeply ingrained in our culture and tradition. First and foremost, it stands as a beacon of leadership and authority. The, Beagle pres the Beagle's presence on a firefighter's uniform denotes their rank, symbolizing the hierarchy within the Miami Fire Department. Thus, when we pass the Department Beagle to a new fire chief, we are not merely presenting a token, we are entrusting them with the vital duty of guiding and safeguarding our members, the community, and anyone that should call upon the Miami Fire Department. Moreover, the bugle holds within it the rich tapestry of our history and heritage. It echoes once commanded orders and orchestrated the response to fire scenes. In the transfer of the department bugle, we honor our past and pledge to uphold the timeliness principles that define our noble profession. The bugle transcends its metallic form. It embodies leadership, tradition, and the unwavering dedication of firefighters to the protection of lives and property. As our new fire chief accepts this emblem, let us collectively acknowledge the gravity of the responsibility it represents. At this time, Robert Heavy will be presented with the department bugle, marking the formal transfer of 
command for outgoing Fire Chief Joseph Zorabi. And now at this time, I'd like to call up City Clerk Todd Hannon, Janissa Hevia, and Aiden Hevia for the swearing in, oath of office, and pinning of his first Fire Chief badge. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Chief Heavy, I'd like to have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Robert Heavy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support, protect, protect, and defend, and defend the Constitution and laws, the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, of the United States of America, and of the State of Florida, and of the State of Florida, and the Charter, and the Charter of the City of Miami, of the City of Miami, and in all respects, and in all respects, faithfully discharge the duties, faithfully discharge the duties of Fire Chief, of Fire Chief of the City of Miami, of the City of Miami, Miami Dade County, Florida. Miami-Dade County, Florida. To my colleagues. To my colleagues. And to all of those. And to all of those. I represent and serve. I represent and serve. I pledge fairness. I pledge fairness. Integrity. Integrity. And civility. And civility. In all actions taken. In all actions taken. In all communications made. In all communications made. By me as a public servant. By me as a public servant. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Now that he's done for the first time, the director of the Miami Fire Department, Fire Chief Robert Hevia. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. And a special thank you to all our distinguished guests, Mr. Mayor, for your kind words. They're truly appreciated. And to all our honorable commissioners, your presence adds great significance to this occasion. I want to express my sincere appreciation to our city administration, our brothers and sisters in blue, Chief Morales, and the Miami Police Department, as well as to all the department directors and city leadership in attendance today. Thank you, Father Marino, for a beautiful invocation. Thank you. Our wonderful honor guard flawlessly reminds us of the discipline and pride of our uniform personnel. A special note of gratitude to the Black Pearl Pipes and Drums, whose performance adds an unmistakable flair of the fire department to this event. I also wish to acknowledge the distinguished presence of past Miami Fire Chiefs, Chief Kemp, Chief Shorty Bryson, and fellow fire chiefs from throughout Miami-Dade County. Thank you for being here. My friends, thank you for being here, including those from the Miami-Dade Fair and Board Exposition. Thank you for taking the time to be here today. A profound thank you to Chief Assistant Fire Chief Chris Diaz and all the de dedicated fire department personnel who's tireless jersey just to be here. Thank you and I love you. And to all the current and retired Miami firefighters here today, thank you for being here. Thank you for honoring the fire department and serving the community with pride. Our fire department has a storied legacy, rich with examples of heroism, courage, and compassion forged through over a century of service to the city of Miami. I am profoundly grateful for the trust placed in me by our city manager, our city leadership, and I am deeply honored and humbled to be the 20th fire chief to serve our community and serve the brave men and women of our fire department. To me, these aren't just words or catchphrases. To provide more context to what this means, I have to take you back to 1976. I was about four years old, and my mom, God rest her soul, would feed me her, my favorite meal, her chili, while I sat in a rocking chair watching the TV show, Her Emergency. Have you seen this? You've seen the show, right? I love the show. I absolutely love the show. I was small then, but I distinctly remember my mom sitting at the edge of the sofa, leaning down, that's how little I was, to feed me, and I remained utterly mesmerized throughout every episode. If you're not familiar with this show, it's about Los Angeles Fire Rescue. It was a fire station 51, and they responded to all types of emergencies. The characters of the show were awesome. Firefighters Roy DeSoto, Johnny Gage. To four-year-old me, these firefighters were nothing short of remarkable. They responded to fires, heart attacks, water rescues, car accidents, people's hanging off people hanging off bridges. They did it all, and they weren't superheroes. They didn't wear capes. They were just regular firefighters. They would go back to the station in between calls and do the most mundane task. Clean the trucks, mop the floor. If you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking about. They would cook, eat together. But when the tones rang for station they were laser focused. Problem solvers who risked their lives for strangers and they never sought recognition. They acted with courage, integrity, humility, and selflessness. And most importantly, they had great love for the community that they protected. And if you haven't watched the show, I encourage you to do, you can, you can find it on YouTube. You will know that they had a great love for each other. They were more than just colleagues. They were a family. As a child, I couldn't fully grasp the depth of reality reflected in that simple, yet captivating TV show. Little did I know that it would echo so closely the reality of my own career. It's if I viewed my entire journey through the lens of that mesmerized child in the rocking chair with my mom, forecasting the heroic characters of this fire department, the city of Miami Fire Department, who have embodied the very virtues that have shaped my life. Men and women I have worked throughout my career are like protagonists in a TV show of emergency City of Miami edition. They have influenced me and molded me to better serve our community with the same dedication they exemplify. They've been pivotal in guiding significant life-defining changes, nudging me towards a path of personal growth. 
I'm honored to say that I have learned about the Miami Fire Department family and what it means to be a Miami firefighter throughout my career. Not on my own accord, but by the great men and women who by their example taught me about the virtues of leadership, courage, selflessness, integrity, generosity, and humility. I wanna take this moment to express my gratitude and share some stories about a few firefighters that changed the course of my life. I learned about generosity first from a gentleman who is here today, a retired chief from our department, current deputy fire chief of operations of Miami Beach Chief. Sorry, you're there. There you are. Who took the time to talk to me when I was a young kid working in the hospital about being part of an organization with a history and legacy of service. He not only spoke to me about it, but he brought me the application and invited his family. Want it for warm for you? I never would have been a Miami firefighter. Thank you for showing me about the impact that this uniform can have on someone's life. A few years later, I was a young firefighter in my 20s. Before I was married to my own family, I learned about serving others with selflessness, a deep love for what this patch represents, and leadership from Captain Dan Gibbs, who's about two thirds of the way down. Without question, the most influential leader that I have ever worked for. Captain Gibbons led by example, treated everyone in this community up to his last call with empathy and compassion, was very knowledgeable on every aspect of this job, and underneath all of this, treated his firefighters as if they were part of his immediate family. Captain Gibbons and his wife Debbie opened the doors of, his, of their home to us. And more than anything, we trusted him. Thank you, Captain Gibbons, for being such an influential leader in my life and showing me that great leaders are knowledgeable, compassionate, and trustworthy. From Chief Shorty Bryson, never forget about the men and women in uniform who do the real work out in the field. During his tenure, he was named Fire Chief of the Year by the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association. This is a big deal. This is all of the major fire chiefs in the United States and Chief Shorty Bryson was Fire Chief of the Year. Yet I can't think of a time that he walked by me and didn't stop to have a conversation with me and knew my first name. And I wasn't a chief at the time. I was just washing a truck or mucking the floor. Thank you, Chief Bryson, for making all those around you feel valued and appreciated for their hard work and teaching me that lesson of leadership. I learned that kindness and forgiveness are virtues of a leader that can be more powerful than the sword. From leaders like Deputy Fire Chief Alejandro Fernandez, who's now the Deputy County Emergency Manager, and a good friend of mine. Thank you, Alex. I learned about integrity and humility from leaders like Chief Kemp, the ultimate professional, whose legacy continues in the young men and women that And my predecessor, Chief Zaraba, through multiple national and international urban search and rescue deployments, and even here at home, showed me in real time that in this job, if you're going to be an effective leader, sometimes you just have to be comfortable nav navigating risk for the greater good. There are countless, yes, thank you. There are countless individuals who have influenced me throughout my career, many of whom I haven't mentioned today. I haven't had the opportunity to do that, but the point that I'm really trying to make here is that this ceremony really isn't about me, or it's not about Robert Evian. What we're celebrating today are the generations of men and women who have worn this uniform and have had the courage to be selfless. The courage to be selfless, the courage to place their own lives in danger for the benefit of others. And how this culture and love for family are so deeply rooted in the Miami Fire Department. That is why I can speak of my firsthand witness of the men and women who have preserved our rich history and tradition of selflessly serving the public. As the fire chief, I'm very aware of that responsibility entrusted in me to lead our great fire department with dedication, integrity, and accountability. To all the Miami firefighters, I promise you that I will protect our legacy and the history and tradition of this fire department. I also commit that we will listen to you. We will hold ourselves accountable. 
and we will provide you with the best tools to do your job. To the community, first and foremost, I commit to prioritizing your safety and that of our responders. Our community's well-being is paramount, and I will ensure that our fire department remains vigilant and prepared to respond swiftly and effectively to any emergency that may arise, whether it's a fire, medical emergency, natural or man-made disaster, or any other crisis. Rest assured that the men and women that wear this uniform of the Miami Fire Department will be for you. Secondly, as the city continues to grow and evolve, I also recognize the importance of embracing innovation. We must remain proactive in implementing new technologies, refining our tactics, and staying abreast of the latest developments in providing efficient fire prevention and emergency response. In addition, we will encourage new ways to engage all our, with all of our residents and visitors, enhancing our non-emergency engagement with the community while making sure that we stay prepared for routine responses as well as major disasters that may impact our city. I commit to continuing our culture of inclusivity and diversity within our fire department. Individuals from all walks of life, and it is essential that our department reflects this diversity. I will strive to recruit and retain a diverse team of firefighters and executive staff, ensuring that everyone has an equal opportunity to serve and contribute to our mission. I've spoken a lot today about gifts I've received from people throughout my life. I can't close without acknowledging my good friend, Glenn Barquette, who was a cardiologist that I've worked with for many years and gave me one of the greatest gifts that anyone has ever given me, the gift of faith and trust in God. This gift came in the form of guidance, mentorship, and the best form of all by his example. Glenn passed away a few years ago, but if you want a glimpse of how great this guy was, his entire family is here to celebrate with us today. And lastly, about 26 years ago, I had this crazy idea to leave my steady job and become a firefighter. I didn't have two nickels to rub together. My girlfriend at the time, we had been together for about a year, said, do it! I lived on my own, barely had enough money for groceries. She would make pastrami sandwiches for me and leave them so I would have food to take to the fire academy in my refrigerator. Well, Jalissa later, later became my wife. And with our son, Aiden, have supported me with great sacrifices throughout my entire career. I wouldn't have a fraction of the accomplishments if it weren't for them. We're a small family with just three love for an army. I'm immensely blessed. I've been able to live my childhood dream and for the last 25 years be a part of something much greater than myself, greater than any individual, greater than any fire chief. And just like the TV show Emergency, love and courage are at the heart of the Miami Fire Department. And I know just like every other man and woman you see here wearing this uniform, this isn't just a job for us, it's a calling. We love helping people. Thank you and God bless. Congratulations, Chief. At this time, if you have a Miami Fire Department radio, we ask you to go to the fire channel for the transfer of command announcements.
Before we conclude, this wonderful event would not have taken place without the support and for their dedication to making today possible. Administrative supportive staff from the Fire Chief's Office, specifically Mrs. Stephanie Matthias and Mrs. Yoranka Mendez, thank you for everything. All of the members of the Logistics Division are putting this together for us today. The City of Miami Office of Communications, thank you for all your help. The Miami Fire Department Honor Guard, the Black Pearl Pipes and Drones, GSA Graphics Reproduction, and last but certainly not least, the Miami Marlins for all for the benediction. Well, we've reached the timeline right there, but it's a reminder too that the light will over, always overcome the darkness. We bless you, we praise you, and we thank you, O oh Lord, for this opportunity today to show our gratitude to the leadership of Chief Zaralba and welcome with joyful anticipation Chief Hevia as our new leader and guide. We pray your protecting grace upon all our Miami Fire family today. Excellence through service. Grant them supernatural guidance in chaotic situations. Shield them from injury when they enter harm's way. Speed them safely on their calls and bless their family lives with peace and prosperity. Enlarge their ability to bring reassurance and calm to those who are in fear, grief, or shock. Use their hands as your hands to rescue those in peril, quench blazing fires, and to save the lives of those in medical distress. May St. Florian, patron saint of the fire service, intercede for them, and may your angels protect them in all their ways. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. We ask that you join us in the back for refreshments and snacks. Thank you all for being here and have a wonderful day.